Good morning, traders. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with another edition of Before the Bell for Thursday, September 22nd, 720 a.m. as I'm starting the video. And as always, please run your player at 1.5x. Okay, so yesterday we had the uh, FOMC announcement as expected, 75 basis point increase, but accompanied with a very hawkish commentary by Jay Powell, basically reiterating what he said at uh, Jackson Hole. We're going to keep going, going, going. Uh, no hint whatsoever of, you know, backing off or collecting data or anything like that. Uh, and then we got some wild variations, wild, wild swings in the market. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but my point is, is that, you know, we're still in a rate hiking cycle. I think you're going to see another uh, increase, whether it's, you know, 50 or 75 uh, that first week in November. And then uh, very likely, although less certain, probably a, another increase in uh, mid-December before we head into the new year. So, you know, uh, as we sit here and look at the dollar, which we talked about yesterday, anticipating that to make a leg higher, which it did, um, liquidity continues to be drained from the pool. And that's something what we've been talking about since, God, April or May when this whole thing started, that the combo effect of rising rates, rising dollar, shrinking Fed balance sheet is going to be draining liquidity from the pool. And, uh, and as a consequence of that, being hard on uh, risk assets. And uh, another thing uh, I, I think needs to be noted from what uh, Powell said, I don't think they're, they're afraid of unemployment anymore. I think, you know, they would never say this, but they want to see demand crushed. And an easy way to do that is, you know, put people out of work, unfortunately. Um, and then once you see that unemployment rate start ticking up, it never reverses, right? Uh, it, it ticks up, you know, as the recession kind of rolls out, whether it's a, a small recession or a big one, what happens is once that, once that unemployment rate starts ticking up from low levels, if you go back and look at a chart, and I'll, I'll send you a chart or, or review it in the next video. But what you'll see is unemployment bottom out. And then once it turns, once unemployment starts ticking up, it, it simply does not reverse. It's a very unidirectional type of a chart where when economic expansion is going on, the unemployment rate steadily drops, 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 drops. And then when a contraction starts, that unemployment rate just keeps ratcheting up to, uh, to whatever plateau it finds in which the, the recession would then, we'd be coming out of it and then uh, expansion resumes and the unemployment rate will drop. Uh, that's a long way of saying, I don't think he cares. Uh, I think his number one focus is uh, inflation. If he can get that without causing job loss, great. But I think in his mind, if it does cause job loss, that's that's the price that has to be uh, paid to get uh, prices, uh, inflation in line. And the only way to do that is to crush demand. And I don't think he has any regard for equity markets unless you know, there's some kind of just massive waterfall and things start to get really chaotic, then you might see him step in. But that's nothing to trade on. I mean, 
that'll happen after the fact, not not any, you know, if we dribble down 20% from here, he's not going to he's not going to do anything. It would only be in a uh, you know, a panic waterfall really just everything falling apart at the same time so anyways uh of course there'll be bounces but uh i think we've been pretty consistent you know lower lower from here i don't see us rocketing up to uh new highs anytime soon let's put it that way so anyways uh strong dollar if you're in this thing, you can uh, uh, simply stay long, I would say, against, you know, whatever level here, 109. If we, if we move up, you can move your stop up into this 110.50 area if you want to play it, you know, really tight. But I think, I think the dollar is going to continue to go higher here. Um, another trade I like. Is being long treasuries there was a and you can see it here I mean this is a daily chart not the best place to to look at at what happened after the Fed but we took a look down on that first uh, reaction off of the Fed and then reversed it and went higher so I think what you're gonna see here is a flight to safety and as equities start to wobble, I think you're going to see a move into uh, treasuries. And the nice thing about it is, is that we've got a beautiful pivot here at 108. I think, uh, I think uh, being long against 108 will uh, prove to be a nice trade. Yeah, and you know, set your stop somewhat below. I mean, you never, you go in with the best of intentions with what you think uh, will happen, but you always got to put a stop in in case you're wrong. And I, I think you should, you know, wherever your comfort level is with a, you know, how much room you want to leave it. But on this type of trade, I would buy yourself some time. You can either do like a, like a, uh, oh God, I mean, you could do a zillion different things. You could get, you know, a 108, 113 spread, you know, to get back to this uh, bottom of this value area. You could say, you know what, I'm just going to get like a 110 and see if it doesn't, you know, drive up to this higher high. But I would definitely buy some time. I would probably go out into November uh, with that trade, given you know October's just October expiration is three weeks away. I mean, you can do it closer if you like, but I would, I would, uh, I would buy yourself some time on that trade, Vix. We took a brief peak above 30 yesterday, but then they pulled it back. Um, uh, even though, I mean, you had the, the big move down. That was on the, uh, on that big rip we had. And then uh, they went up to explore above 30. They couldn't hold that. And then they closed it around 28. So again, uh, be mindful of direction, but any kind of break and hold above 29.30, I think um, then the door will be open for a uh, bigger opening uh, as far as the down move in equities and, of course, volatility. We saw the highs earlier in the year up around uh, 36, 37, right in there. So... Uh, be mindful of these levels. Uh, Bitcoin just, I mean, still hanging out around 19,000. That's, I mean, that's your clear pivot. Obviously, price has memory there. And uh, 
I think I showed you the weekly chart. There's not much below down to 12.5. So, I mean, price knows that. Price knows how important it is to hold this 19,000 level. And uh, if it breaks, then, you know, it could be one of those free fall situations. And I think in general, uh, you know, Bitcoin's a risk asset and it's also very subject to uh, the withdrawal of liquidity. You know, it benefited from liquidity on the way up, right? You know, QE, 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 interest rates at zero. It benefited from all that. But since rates have been increasing and liquidity has been decreasing, it's just you know, been pressure the whole way down. So that may be, a, that may end up being a great trade if you can uh, somehow get short against a break of 19,000 and just ride it down. Now, if you're not into the futures contracts of, of Bitcoin, there's a lot of Bitcoin proxies out there. Uh, both long and, you know, you can either short a, a, uh, a long proxy or get long a short proxy. There's long and short ETFs. And one of the deciding factors in that is, you know, if you're doing it in an IRA or some other restricted accounts, you'll have to find a short Bitcoin ETF type instrument and get long that and uh, uh, then you're hoping for a move down to uh, like 12.5. Uh, oil was down yesterday. You want to just keep your eyes peeled on a break below 82. And the thinking there is You know, if we're if we're bound for a recession, that's going to hit demand. Um, the fly in the ointment is these SPR releases are going to be winding up. I mean, they're getting down to the bottom of the barrel, literally, on SPR reserves. I mean, we're back to the reserve level of you know, like 1982 when the thing just started. So. That thing's going to be winding up. And then, of course, uh, the government, probably after the election, will start buying again. So, uh, might be a tricky trade, but certainly from the charts, uh, a break below 82 uh, is your short entry down into the upper to mid uh, 70s. Just going to show you EWG. It was down 3% yesterday. We were talking about that. Uh, we've, we've broken down below this shelf of support. You can see uh, a large volume over price bar here. And we had the double bottom. We had a bounce and now we're back below this 2150. Just stay short, right? This candle will not finalize until tomorrow at 4 o'clock. But in, unless this can break back above 2150, then you just stay short. And I think we're, you know, we're, we're in the October series. And, and even if you were, you know, if you weren't in that trade, this is still a good entry in my mind to get short EWG because you've got a stop you know, st uh, still really close by. And then if you wanted, you could just open a position out in November rather than October, depending on how you wanted to play it. Like, you know, 21 puts for for uh, October or November, right at the money and see if this doesn't come down even more. Because right now, as I see it, yeah, there's some support in here in the 19s, but the COVID lows 
are certainly open for this for this one. Namo, we had the big down move yesterday. Now we're down at minus 73 and down at minus 60 on the NASDAQ. Can we push lower from here? Certainly, you know, any kind of you know catastrophic waterfall that'll blow through this. But short of that, I would be, uh, I would be, uh, very tactical short term in any short positions because this uh, uh, this is going to be ripe for a bounce and I know uh, I know this is always a difficult thing it's difficult for me after all these years you know just freaking trust this thing all right just trust it uh, it has when it gets down to these levels, you know, oversold like this, and and Na uh, Nimo as well, it's gonna reverse. Now, can it hesitate? Yes. Can it plow a little lower before it bounces? Yes. But you don't want to be, you don't want to be, Gonzo short with, with. Uh, these oscillators down at this level because you'll wake up one morning and there'll be you know a rip your face off counter trend rally that will really really hurt so uh, my advice on these uh, with the position of these oscillators stay very tactical you know if you want to uh, if you see downside happening during the day you know, by all means, take it, but be very judicious, you know, rolling and protecting that position as it falls. You know, if you got in, you know, you shorted 100 and it's 95 and you want to hold that position, roll down to 95. Just keep, you know, going to the bank, going to the bank, going to the bank, because there's going to be a day where that last position is going to go against you. And you want to have as much money in the bank as possible as you ride that thing down because there will be a snap reversal that you're not going to get in time. It might happen overnight. Uh, it might happen very, very quickly during the day. So just be mindful of these, uh, of the positioning in these oscillators because they, they are extended. As we move on to SPY, I've moved down some of the major pivots uh, after last night. Now, uh, you know, we came up, actually tagged the eight day, actually got very close. Yeah, we got into the 389s, which was essentially a back touch of the major pivot at 390. Remember, we've been talking about that. And then we broke to a new low. So that's bearish price action all the way. Now we've got a level at 375 and we've got a uh, uh, a gap down here around 368. Uh, and then we've got the June lows. So uh, definitely more downside is open, but uh, could be, you know, uh, just just a simple scenario today and, and uh, looking at futures we were kind of flat so nothing really happening at the moment in futures but watch for your hammer candles what is that a you know a deep plunge lower scare everybody and then they they uh, rip it back the other way here would be an example of one right here see that break the prior low, take a deep look below, come down to this level, and then they buy it up and uh, basically close uh, near the highs of the day. So, uh, you know, watch out for these uh, hammer candles, and they're often a very good predictor that a, 
uh, at least a near-term reversal is afoot. Going down to the 60-minute chart, you can see we filled this little gap here. And, you know, if we were to break uh, 377.50, then the door would be open. Remember, we had a level on the uh, daily chart at 375. So that'll be a level to, uh, excuse me, be aware of on, on SPY. Cues. Initial leg down, bear flag rally, even though it wasn't really a pretty one. Maybe call that a Fibonacci rally. Back up in the resistance that failed, and now we've made a lower low. 285, to me, is your pivot uh, for today. You break two, uh, yeah, 285, then you got 280 at these lows, and then below 280, uh, below 280, you've got uh, this open gap and then the uh, June lows right there. So, um, and notice here also at uh, 280, yeah, right here at 285, you've got the uh, largest volume over price bar on this particular chart. So, if bulls are going to step in, they need to do it right here. Otherwise, this volume over price support really falls away down to the uh, June lows. And here's just a little, little refinement on the um, uh, the price action from yesterday. We had uh, right out of Powell. We had at two o'clock. We had a deep look down to two eighty five tagged that perfectly then they had the big rip that almost got up to to 295 and then they went right back down and broke the uh, broke the prior lows here at 285 so very clearly 285 is your pivot IWM our 178 pivot uh, clearly broke yesterday and so now, I mean, we've got an open gap. Then we got another big level at 172, then 168, then 164, back down to the June lows. Uh, same kind of price action, leg down, fib rally into resistance, and then leg down. So right here at 175, or wherever it closed, yeah, 175.34, call it 175. That That is an important level for today because you've got a, a high volume over price bar here and then another one down at 172. But big picture, bearish chart. Lost the main pivot, price below all the moving averages. All the moving averages are tilted down 60 minute chart you just see it a little clearer and you got the uh, refinement on where the gap is and all that uh, good stuff so if there were to be some kind of a uh, bounce off the top of the gap uh, and then you get a reclaim of uh, this level here at 176.50 or even 178, the main pivot, then that would be, you know, your long there. Meta, out to the daily chart. We've been talking about this. You've got a measured move target down here to 140. That was driven off of this uh, $15, $17 uh, trading range from uh, this breakdown you got two big levels of support coming in one the bottom of the measured move at 140 and then you've got the COVID low at 137 
those areas to me are going to be your primary places to look for a bounce. I, you know, anything can happen, but I think if it were to get down to this COVID low and you've been, <clears throat> you got short at any point in here, I think you got to cover at the COVID low and uh, figure on a bounce uh, at least. Um, I think a good objective short would be on any back test of 155 back in <coughs> back excuse me back into the teeth of all this resistance here you get something you know a breakdown and a back test to 155 that's where I would lay into uh, you know a short with some duration and then with a stop just above and if, I mean if you get stopped out you get stopped out that's trading but that would be a very objective place to look for any kind of bounce rally to fail. Moving on to Apple, got the daily chart up here as well. And you can see a uh, downtrend line firmly in place. Uh, we had a nice multi-day rally off of these lows. Came right up into the converging 50 and 20 uh, downtrending resistance or downtrending EMAs and the downtrend line got rejected there hard yesterday and so now we're uh, below uh, all the moving averages you can see the 200 coming in here at 155 uh, if you wanted to be uh, tactically short against either 156 or 155 I think that's fine and then just know that any kind of bounce back you know into uh, into here it's really got a clear 156 uh, right here uh, where this pivot is and where the downtrend line intersects to get your breakout for a potential bounce move higher but as it stands now bearish chart below the 200 you'll have to decide you know how to best tactically trade it but of course then if you lose this level here at 151 150 and a half where you had support support resistance support undercut recovery you break that then I think you're coming to uh, 144 so you'll have to decide if you want to try and get something in here or you know wait for this for this pivot or this low uh, to break Tesla put in a little double top yesterday and then let go into the close you got a nice pivot here at 300 I think you break 300 you come down to 296 and then 291 very clear levels on this chart you know and as long as it it holds 300 you know if you see a rally emerging you could be long against 300 and always remember if you get one of those hammer candles you know say we open you know weak and then they buy it up and recapture 300 you want to get long then 300 right recapturing a level from below Microsoft rough shape no other way to put it uh, we broke the June low which was you know back here at 242 we spent three days testing 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 and now uh, even on the rally yesterday you can see the little little uh, wick come up and touch the eight day and get rejected from there so I mean you can be short against two seven uh, excuse me you can be short against 242 and that'll jump out at you on on uh, on a shorter time frame chart and we do have some uh, support here at uh, 235 to be aware of Amazon again broke this 121 
and now we're in no man's land, I expect this to uh, come down at least for a touch of 117. And you can see back here in July, we got down to 115 uh, before we got that. Uh, there was a gap up back there. So if we were to come down, maybe, you know, hit the top of that gap, put in a little bounce, then come down for a fill, I think 115 would be, you know, a good place to probably try a, a long or a short would be coming down, seeing if you get a bounce at 117, little fib bounce. And if it went up to 121, I would, I would definitely hit it short there uh, with a stop just above and then see if it comes right back down towards 117 and potentially even a fill towards uh, 115. Uh, uh, Google's in real trouble. We've been talking about this for a while. After the fake breakout bull trap, right to the bottom of this 1350 wide trading range. So as it stands now, this 9150 is our measured move target. Um, if you were to say you're not in it, and with the oscillators extended, this puts in a rally and kicks back to 105. Breakdown, back test, rejection, right? That classic move, back, you know, uh, breakdown, back test, down. 105 would be a great place to enter a short with a stop uh, just above. And then you'd be looking for uh, 91.50 over time. So uh, that's how I see Google. Uh, Netflix had made its way uh, into this big gap the other day, basically revalidated this high. And then when it let go, it lost uh, 245, then it lost 240 and 238. You've got a nice level there at 238 to shoot against on the short side. And if you got a a move down to 234, just be aware that you had a lot of rejections along that line. So 234 becomes uh, an important support level for Netflix to hold there. Uh, and if it can't, you're probably going to come down here to the top of this gap at 228 and potentially fill it to 224. Semis, these are in a uh, really nice position for uh, an entry, either long or short. You've got a very clear pivot at 200. Notice yesterday, uh, strong action got you right up to the top of this value range. You can see it here. Uh, you know, a series of rejections. A series of reach ups that got rejected went to the went to the bottom here at 200 and then made its way back to 208 at the top of value and got rejected and came right back down to 200 so remember from our daily chart a break of 200 opens up 190 to the downside but as long as 200 holds then there's the potential for yet another bounce trade up to 204 and then potentially 208. Uh, I was surprised at the price action along ARC. Um, I've been thinking there's going to be extra horsepower in these names to the downside. Did not see that yesterday. Down 2%. It did break uh, the midpoint. So you've got an objective short there. To the bottom of the box but I would have thought they'd have been down a lot more uh, RG was down 3% testing the bottom here I think 34 you know is your clear pivot as we've been discussing along as long as it's down at 34 I think the door is open to 31 
um, and if there's any kind of uh, rally, a move back up through 34 will, uh, you know, trigger a long for a, you know, bounce trade if, if that's going to happen. Uh, down 2.6% on flagship. Uh, I think you can, we, we've been talking about, I think you can move this, the bottom of the box down to 40 and use that as your pivot versus 41. You see a low here. You see uh, lows here, and you see some lows here. I think you could be short on a break of 40, looking for uh, uh, 36, which is, I mean, a nice move. That's uh, 10%, right? Four from 40. So if that happens, uh, that would be good. And But just be careful of that reversal. You know, a look below, then a recovery. That would be your buy. And then wrapping up with ArcW, uh, working its way down to revalidate these lows along 49. Anything below that, you're looking at uh, 46 at the bottom of the box. So just to wrap up, very hawkish, Fed, no end in sight to the rate hiking cycle, going to sacrifice the real economy and jobs if that's what it's going to take. Uh, bonds, I think there's a safety trade to be made there, uh, especially if you start seeing uh, selling. We're right at the pivot point at 108 on TLT. I like that trade long with, with uh, duration. Um, let's see. Uh, shrinking liquidity, you know, dollar higher, QT, full bore, rising rates. So uh, watch Bitcoin on a break of 19,000. That's going to be a big one. But in general, the door is open now to go back and test those um, June lows. But with the caveat that our oscillators are stretched to the downside, be very, very tactical in your shorts because the conditions are set up for uh, what could be, you know, a quick reflexive bounce to relax those oscillators. And if you get kickback bounces into resistance, those would be much more objective trades than to try to you know, take a stab at something in the dark, in no man's land, with the oscillators extremely extended. So let's wrap it up there. Hope you guys have a good day of trading. I uh, hope you found the video helpful. Of course, if you're new here, uh, hit the subscribe button, the alarm bell. You'll get all the YouTube content. Jump over in the show notes. Find the link to the website where you can drop in your email address and get any extra content observations that I may see throughout the day or over the weekend, etc. So let's wrap it up there. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.